stint here at the Downing Centre with Gordon's work for Cultural War II. And we've got two days left and we're in the process of figuring out where to put the works next and what, what exhibitions possibly are on the horizon. But we're thrilled with the success of this show. Um, we've had a lot of interest from the general public, really good responses and some wonderful guests have um, spoken on behalf of the um, various situations that um, are involved in the Indigenous struggle since 1788, as Gordon reminds us constantly. Yes, these paintings, you know, it's been very a spiritual, spiritually awakening experience and uh, very touching coming to terms with, you know, the position that I and we've been placed in here and where we're now able to, you know, help where we can by getting them the message out there and uh, showing this great work and painting for what it is. It's a, it really is a universal story and universal appeal and interest. In, you know, I can see these works in any major institution throughout the developed world particularly the Museum of Modern Art in New York and the National Gallery of Australia is, is you know, this, this iconic work, this is behind us, you know, the hero image of the ALS, the Aboriginal Legal Service, for many years, created in 1978. You know, it's, it's, it's important work, it's like iconic work and it, it must be in a publicly visible institution where it can be visited by the masses and seen and, and, and recognised for the, the fresh, satirical and whimsical nature of a vastly serious and ongoing topic. So, you know, the fact that, that Gordon is able to throw light on these serious, you know, concerning Topics is, is 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 really quite you know heartwarming to, to 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 see his compassion for humanity, but you know the work it, it, with the humour it, it's really accessible to, to all all the people, and so that's why you know an institutional placement of this work alone, the work behind it, federation that that's got to go to the MCA. You know, I, yeah. I think Gordon has, you know, managed to survive as an artist, but also has struggled as an artist and as an Indigenous artist for the recognition he deserves, not for, you know, um, self-interest, but because of his outspoken and resilient and um, constant, consistent commitment to bringing the story of this country to the general population. The more work we have in um, galleries and in places that can be, um, you know, on view to the public, the more those stories will start to be integrated in, into our narrative and um, we need to sort of flip the script, I think, you know, there's such negative stigma um, that surrounds this ugly history and we need to really flip that by recognising it for one and for two, taking it on board as an Australian who doesn't have Indigenous heritage as something that forms our identity um, and we need to have pride. Absolutely, yeah and opportunities to engage with Indigenous people, the elders and then the next generation, the young generation of um, survivors in this post-genocide, post-colonial um, young country that we live in now. Uh, we need to really carry the roots, as many of the roots as we can forward. And I think God is one of those elders who um, can help do, the, do that and has been doing that for a very long time. Absolutely. I think also what the works for me have sort of um, prompted this interest in Australian art that I've never really had. Um, I've always looked abroad for inspiration 
and um, especially in my own education in the arts, the Australian experience was never really um, encouraged as part of my education in this country. So it's something I really had to seek out for my own self. And Gordon's work really um, stands out. It's unique and and special because he really does paint from his mind's eye and he creates these um, experiences that are very emotional um, and the artwork has a trans transcendental nature. It does, you know, the, the emotive material that he mined, you know, the very sombre themes, the various atrocities carried out and, you know, his works have been discussed and likened to Basquiat in that he does flow with the mind's eye and uh, his, his grasp of, of many different styles is, is really evident in this collection of work here at Culture War II. Um, we have works from 78 through to 2015. We really see a prolific artist who has been mining the material and, and paying that message forward and you know, looking bringing, for, looking bringing our attention, bringing our eye to focus in on the lens of the, the experience from the other side. And um, a lot of people have very um, emotional responses to his artwork and, and um, you know, you see this kind of friction between the aesthetics in art and then the message in art and especially art that has a social justice focus and you can't always create a, a beautiful painting. You have to, and Gordon really has that courage to um, you know, explore themes that are really dark. The dark, the dark paintings is, is another example of really important work that many collectors, many, you know, everyday collectors would, would not be as open to having that in their decor, that would, it would look great. And it's highly controversial too because it means that by owning a siren you're aligning yourself with um, a, you know, a political uh, ideology which is uh, in this country uh, a very sensitive issue and it's not discussed in the mainstream um, in, in a way that is courageous. It feels like it's a very treading on eggshells kind of experience and um, no one really wants to talk about it in the way that I think we need to. But then, you know, the other night when we had Michael Kirby and Larissa Brand speak, you can see that there is this community around Gordon Siren and also Gordon Siren's um, connection with the whole legacy and heritage of Indigenous activism and resistance and freedom fighting. Um, and it rings true because people like Michael Kirby and Larissa um, support it and speak on behalf of the message. So it's great to have that support and hopefully we can really generate some uh, resurgence in the interest in God's work. Yeah, and, and I guess yeah, what, what I was trying to say with the, with the darker paintings, I think there really is an institutional appeal for these works because they're really touching paintings. However, some retail investors and normal collectors may think that they're a bit strong for their, for their houses, you know. But, you know, that's why I think the institutional, you know, positioning of these, you know, they're, they're going to be darker paintings when you are mining, you know, historical material which is of a darker nature. It's, it, 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 it talks about, you know, yeah. genocide. And I think, you know, like we're, we're young um, and we're coming into the world with, you know, a commitment to really looking for the truth and seeking the truth and understanding that our predecessors have always um, engage themselves in that quest for the truth and, and that the truth will set us free. So in order to do that, we really have to face it head on rather than um, keeping it in the, in the shadows. And 
this policy of out of sight, out of mind in relation to Indigenous struggle has been one that um, has, you know, uh, prevailed for a, a long time. And that's where it really needs to change because then we can start, you know, um, inviting wider Australia to really take it on board as part of their Australian experience. Absolutely, yes. That's really what has to happen. It has to be, you know, in each person's lovely, you know, complacency and enjoying this lucky country, this sunny land of golden plains and and, and in all its beauty and, and uh, luxuries that it affords us, you know, the time has to be thought about, you know, everything that, that comes with the country and the first inhabitants, the traditional cust custodians of what is and always will be Aboriginal land. So, as you say, you know, it's just got to be, you know, people, people how can people be so enjoying of their daily luxuries and, and comfortable times when, when, you know, many people have been displaced and yeah, it's, it's just uh, something that's got, and these paintings with a beautiful, fresh... Deeply personal as well. Everything comes from a story that Gordon is connected to on a personal level. He's not just looking back at things on behalf of everyone. He's right there in the centre of it and his whole, in, his whole family is connected to it. His cousin Brian Sire inside the Black Theatre, Dan and Dave, his uncles who were both um, members of the Black Horse Brigade and died in World War One, and um, Elaine, his wife, has been documenting years, decades of life in Sydney and Aboriginal life, um, living conditions, uh, incredible cultural con contributions, Bandara, um, early inception, photographs of that period and the landscape and how this fight has really, you know, is nothing new and it's passed on to the next generation and the next and there's feels like there's a lot of weariness, there's a lot of tired um, and exhaustion, feelings of exhaustion that when we're meeting, you know, um, these activists who are still alive and you can just feel that this fight has just been going for a long time and it continues and we need to encourage others and non-Indigenous members of the community really be part of that change and to be interested in work like this. Um, Deaths in Custody, 1993, a whole series of paintings that were painted um, where Gordon took case studies and he was directly involved with um, following the experiences of these people who were dying whilst incarcerated and um just yes, bringing all these you know unmentioned topics to the surface doing it with really good paintings that really engage and captivate and whimsical you know subject matter which which it it it, it, it brings all of these you know these these uh themes and these historical points to life. Yeah. yeah. There's a great mystery in Gordon's works too, that he's got such a sensitivity and a romance as well, like black boy fairies amidst these wonderful memories um, of a land that has such a deep spiritual connection to it, its people. And even from our perspective as young Australians being born under the Southern Cross and for me personally, noticing my understanding of Australia opening up and it really does come from the landscape and connection to land and all of these motifs that Gordon has such a beautiful way of rendering and conveying to us um, the Aboriginal angels and and diffusing the Western um, influence, the colonial influence with, you know, a, a heritage and a legacy that was deprived, of in, deprived um, through, you know, 
insidious, uh, sinister, and highly disruptive um, policies like the white Australia policy and all of the policies um, that, in hindsight, are absolutely undoubtedly connected to the history of genocide in this country and we really need to be treating the situation as a post-genocide experience where now we have between one and three percent of the population indigenous in a country that is mostly made up of migrants and um, and settlers and that's something that needs to be reconciled um, Gordon Gordon's paintings have a, a capacity to do that for us. Yes, yes. And I think, you know, this, the Aboriginal angels that he, that he minds, the Aboriginal ballerinas, New York, London, Redfern, you know, he's, he's bringing the Aboriginal and Indigenous Australian people onto that global stage. They're not, you know, exhibits on a museum. They are actually a thriving culture and, you know, people that, yeah. that, that are part of this planet, you know. It's, it's and a story of survival, you know, the more you learn about the history, the more difficult it is to um, believe that this survival was even able to take place. I mean, it's, it's actually a miracle that we still have something left um, to build on and to rebuild. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, judgment by his peers, 1978, it's been great to handle such an important painting. And you know, having handled a lot of you know important Australian art in my in my travels, uh, as general manager of Sotheby's auction house, and uh, this work is strong for its painterly, colourly and artistic merits and qualities, but it's also the underlying subject matter material which gives it that extra strength and clout that shows its cultural uh, comment, commentary and uh, it's really, the, 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 the great thing about contemporary art that, that, that I, I find is it gives you a comment on the culture or the, 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 life, the life of the artist, and the artist can directly comment on their life, how he or she sees it and how he or she interacts with it. And this, the material that Gordon's mining here is it's, it's, it's relevant and uh, very touching, so it adds a lot of strength to the work and he's able to you know, convey that through its artistic and painting merits as well. So. Mm -hmm. And just even just the beautiful choices um, Gordon, Gordon brings to us in his paintings, like Featherfoot. And I've never known that a Featherfoot in Aboriginal culture is um, a code for a trusted person. And his interest in, in the emu for that very reason, and the emu being one of the few animals where the male rears the young. And that's why he continually um, paints the featherfoot and his interest in the emu and the portion of the emu beyond just an aesthetic rendering of the animal, but also as this message that he's passing to the viewer, which is this idea of looking out for trustworthy comrades in life and how important that is to remember through the symbol of the emu. Yeah. And it, it is. It's, it's a. It's a lovely. You know, have these lovely poignant paintings with, with messages in them. And I mean, it's. It's. You know, the the dissident, dissident and drastic measures that were taken in nineteen seventy two. You know. It's that's that was a, a, a you know a desperate cry, for the Aboriginal people and their rights. And uh, Gordon led the charge on that, and and has you know been left to deal with the consequences uh, of his actions, and he's able to meditate through his paintings, and uh, you know try and see beauty and and good and, and uh, hope and uh, 
positivity in, in, in the world, which is, which is, you know, with someone who has graduated from the University of Life with a triple PhD, is able to provide a fair bit of insight in his paintings for right. us. And Gordon, I mean, you know, when you look at art history and you see the standout artists and movements, they always had a unique um, characteristic of doing something differently to how the mainstream expected. So the Gordon really fits into that that history of um, you know avant garde pushing of boundaries and pushing of um, you know ideas that are unsavory or, or unpopular at the time. And it takes a lot of strength to do that as an artist because it's a difficult struggle to be an artist, especially in a country like Australia. We don't really hold the arts up as a pillar of civilization. You really sort of tread on artists and, and um, that's something that really needs to change too. But Gordon's contributions as an activist, as an artist. As an Aboriginal artist, I really feel that this is Aboriginal Indigenous art because as an Aboriginal man, Gordon can reflect on his on his life, his position in life, and uh, and, and commenting on the life, you know, on his life and, and the life of Aboriginal people. And, and for that reason, I really see this as contemporary Indigenous Aboriginal art, you know, and uh, it should be it should be held in all the major institutions with collections of contemporary indigenous art because yes you will see the mining of ancient motifs with the western desert and central australian movements but you know the, with the coastal with the coastal uh, you know indigenous people sydney based urban based you know and, and today, as contemporary artists, they, they, they're commenting on their position and their, their plight and their, their existences and how they interact with the world. And, uh, yeah, for that reason, I see this as Aboriginal art very, very relevantly and should be in, in, in major collections for contemporary Indigenous so, art. Thank you very much, Barry.